before um, that, who wiped the king? No one in a position Nobody. of power. Just Ma'am. the boyfriend of the stool. He wasn't quite a groom yet. He hadn't right? committed. Oh. The side I piece of the James. stool. Hi, everyone, and welcome to 500 Open Tabs. I'm Kava Taharian. And I'm Hannah Hillam, and today we have a special guest. She's an illustrator and designer from Oklahoma City and has been working anime and comic conventions since 2007. Please welcome Alexandra Brott. Hello. Hey, Alex. Welcome. <laughs> Yo. Welcome to the podcast. Nice to see you. Podcast. Indeed. Nice to see you, too. It's It's been a minute since uh, Emerald City, where Emerald we got City. to be feral. We hope. Yeah, that was a fun That's time. A, Last time we so all hung good. out, <laughs> we were up in That's Seattle a, in uh, yeah. what was it March of this yeah. year. We had an evening after, as <laughs> often happens, after a convention's over, we all just, go I don't even know, go insane because you're oh. so exhausted. And well, yeah, tired artists yeah. just feeding up of each other's manic energy. It's great. Everyone loves us. Uh, <laughs> Extremely yeah, popular. Totally. We Extremely. believe that. As long yeah, as we first, believe that. I think I first met you at Emerald City, right? It was like a few years ago. Year. No, two years ago. Two, two I think it was two ago. years ago. Yeah. 2021. 2022. Three? Yeah. No. I don't know. Four, Let's just keep saying numbers. This Never is stop. crucial for the podcast to know which year it is. One, two, five. Um, <laughs> Some time ago. Yes. Anyway, uh, yeah. Yes, you, you also know another one of our friends, I believe. Stephen Ray Morris is a person. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Who I saw this morning. I, I was on you my walk to go morning? get coffee and I saw, saw him. I've seen Stephen a couple times because I just walk around in North Hollywood when I go get coffee oh, and he's I... there. Uh, Stephen Sighting. Mm-hmm. Stephen Sighting in the wild. He said hello. Um, but Alex, <laughs> thank you for joining us on our podcast. Uh, I'm sorry that you have to do this, but we're thrilled to have you. Ah, well, you know, I'm, I try <laughs> my best apologize? to donate my time, the altruistic side. Don't you? <laughs> Uh, so why don't you tell us about your your open tabs? How many tabs you got open? Are you an open ha- tab haver is the first question. I believe that's actually how you had me do a little blip on the Emerald City live stream that you did. Was oh, because that's I was like, right. Oh, oh that's right. Nice I forgot about you, that. Kave. I actually have 500 open tabs right now. Mm-hmm. Um, how, what, what so tab it's actually right. 495 right now. Oh, 495. Same. Mm-hmm. That's... Very impressive. Hold on. Now I got to check. I totally forgot you came to our absolute disaster of a live stream that we did on YouTube where we couldn't figure out yeah. how to get two headphone mics to work. It was Oh, you need the commonality of me <laughs> and a disaster <laughs> and headphones. Not the last 45 minutes. Oh, wait, I actually have a watch on this one. Oh. Listen, it was a good time. It doesn't matter. It's okay. We were having fun. I was singing songs. Hannah was getting sweaty. I don't know. It's just usually what we do. I blacked out. Um, I don't remember the last yeah. hour. <laughs> I made anyway, so you got a lot of tabs open. You're part of it. You're into it. Thank you for mm-hmm. joining us on the show. And since you are our guest, we're going to let you go first with your story. Why don't you tell us what you've got? Okay. Well, this summer, uh, this new Amazon Prime series came out called My Lady Jane, based off this wonderful book series written by a few authors. So I have no idea what their names are, but it's really good. So the book's the same name, My Lady Jane. And it's about Lady Dream Grey, who got beheaded, you know, um, Tudor era at its finest. Let's just behead everyone. Um, oh, yeah. But basically, she the, the good old uh, days. was accused of usurping <laughs> the days. throne by Queen Mary. Which and, she did. Uh, and she got yeeted. <laughs> so She did. Uh, but this, Even is, though this is a little twist. Her cousin um, was like, you're going to be the queen. They still that's kill right. her. Doesn't matter. That's right. Doesn't matter. That's right. <laughs> Mary Queen of Scots over there just like. Psycho. What's going on over there? Anyway. Mm. And so a little bit different than the book, there was a a position of power, some would say, that was introduced that I was not familiar with in all of anything I know about the British monarchy, which is not a lot. The groom of the stool was mentioned. (laughs) Sorry, what? Like shit? (laughs) You get married to shit? (laughs) Yeah, is this so the stool, a stool you like, sit on? All right, Alex, or... you got to be on deck. And I was like, upper. oh. <laughs> Groom of the stool. That's my Groom nickname from now on. Stool. <laughs> oh, that was a good, that was a good royal accent. <laughs> why, why, thank you. Should I continue this in this accent the entire time? The no. All in the accent. <laughs> I hereby decree Ew. that the groom of the stool must continue Ooh. this tab. <laughs> the tab. The tab of the groom of the stool. 
<clears throat> okay, wait, or so what's the groom of the stool? <laughs> groom of the king's close stool. Oh. Oh, what? Oh, indeed. Indeed. So they added more words to that and it makes less sense. It, uh, oh. Classic English language. <laughs> it's classic. So initially, this position, uh, much as you would anticipate uh, if you have... <laughs> Got it. Oh, uh, <laughs> he's already. You've already got him. This is already my favorite tab. I, I know, right? I was like, oh man, this seems like such a thing that they would do. I hope that I have not. You're right. Uh, Double decked, really. <laughs> Here, he, here's what I'm gonna say. You're yeah. taking something that is from both of our. Like, this is something he would do, but this is also something that I would do because it's right. all yeah, about like. True. Well, Old English crap, and then English. he talks yes. about probably poop crap. and toilets, which is what <laughs> yeah. he loves. I'm so I'm glad <laughs> that I could join this together. You've already knocked it out of the you. park. Yeah, already. See, this is doing what you've missed. You've missed me. Yeah, of we course. Have. So this position, uh, groom of the stool, started out <laughs> as you might, you know, infer uh, with a bit of ass wiping, a little bit. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> It oh, is uh, no. initially, as as the Wikipedia article says, initially responsible for assisting the king in creation <laughs> and hygiene. <laughs> what does that mean? Like just wiping he jumps up. on his belly. <laughs> it is the physical intimacy of the role uh. <laughs> led to the role the man having a lot of confidence. Uh, in himself and the knowledge uh, that he gained from such a intimate role. Mm. Oh, he uh, saw everything. He saw everything. He smelled everything too. Ugh. Dude, do you think they still do that? You think Charles is in there with some dude? Like what? Unfortunately, <laughs> uh, Queen Victoria kind of. Oh wait, oh. no, it wasn't Queen Victoria. They actually were still using it. I was going to say it didn't evolve. Yeah, I could have just the, have a different name the, now. The centuries. The, the royal poops, yes, King Cooper Edward VII yeah, be... <laughs> in 1901 discontinued. Oh, seventh. Okay. The now. Duke of Colon is essentially what it's going to be now. <laughs> indeed. Indeed. <laughs> or the Duchess of Colon. Listen, it's no, 2024. No. Anyone can be part of that role. I like indeed. Duchess. Sounds funnier. Duchess of Colon. But Duke is the Duke of poo. the Deuce. Duke Ooh. of the Deuce. That's even better. There we go. There's your, definitely uh, a line honor? item for that on the your runner. <laughs> but it was honor? a position of honor a little bit. Uh, at so least they like, definitely chosen? told the person, poor person who's subjected to that, that it was. It um, sounds like you're like a dish. Like when I was a dishwasher, they'd be like, I know you're just a dishwasher, but it's a very important job. And it's very condescending. Maybe they did that too. It's like, it, I know you're just yeah. wiping the king's butt, but yeah. hey, the he's chosen of God. The stool. Ooh. The <laughs> Do you? Why is it way worse in a British accent? <laughs> also, it was anyway, intended. so this courtier, it became uh, feared and respected for the amount. <laughs> feared and respected. We're not. Like we're, not gonna, uh, we're not going to. We're not going to make about it the secret this. information that they would learn. <laughs> Royal secrets. Was was this getting weaponized? Like, is that something that you could sell to the king of France? Like, you know, hey. Like that. King, that. whatever, Philip's got the run, so you can go ahead and attack now, or what? Well, for um, real, though, like, what did they do? But would you like to know I the feel... best part? Yes. Yeah. So, I feel like you're, you're, you're stringing us along. <laughs> yeah, you're holding back. So the office did change uh, this, this appointment gradually over the decades uh, and centuries into one of administration of the royal finances under Henry what? the Seventh. The groom of the stool became a powerful <laughs> official involved in setting national fiscal policy under, guess what? What? The chamber system. <laughs> okay, wait. So this guy's chamber wiping. Pie. Come on. I got it. Oh, it's great. It's all like he's... jokes. It's great. Oh, I'm not following. <laughs> Is this no, for I'm real or that's a joke? That's for that's real. That's actually where it comes so from? Wait, the word chamber pot? Oh. No, no, no. I don't know if Chamber Pot comes from that. It probably oh, well, actually, does. Yeah, it does. It totally does. Um, so wait, this happened under Henry the Seventh. So this was like uh -huh. 1400s when they started uh -huh. doing this? Uh-huh. Okay. 
And, it and then yeah. before um, that, who wiped the king? No one in a position Nobody. of power. Well, just yeah. the boyfriend of the stool. He wasn't quite a groom yet. He hadn't right? committed. Oh, <laughs> just a little side piece. Well, the side, side piece, piece of, of the stool. <laughs> the side piece of the stool. <laughs> the mistress. No, that doesn't mean. No, no, no. Because we'll get boy. to ladies. Hold so up, what are we okay, even? Okay. What is this time. of the stool? Continue. Yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. So later in the Tudor era, because we've had some queens in our time. Mm-hmm. The groom of the stool position involved into the first lady of the bedchamber. Oh, that's okay. so much nicer. <laughs> first held in 1558 to oh, yeah. Elizabeth I by someone named Kate Ashley or Cat Ashley. Oh. <laughs> Mary uh, Kate and Ashley Olsen's descendants. <laughs> right. Mary Kate and Ashley wiped Queen Elizabeth I. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was one of their like their twin movies so that they did after they left Full House, face, right? Or they travel back in time. They go back in time, and they are <laughs> the forced... two of them are like this back to back. That's why the haunted look. <laughs> yeah, they're they're deep haunted, and then they're like, yeah. yeah. We, we, in order to get a good husband, we had to be part of the quick queen's court. You know. Anyway, that's the only way they could them. get back to the t- present time. Yeah, I'm sorry. Continue to, to marry well. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> but sadly. After only one year, the office oh. effectively be- came to an end when it was neutralized in 1559. I mean, I really wish what that the, went a- down? the Wikipedia article had gone just a touch further and used evacuated because that would have been. Yeah, that would have been way better. Neutralized sounds like someone got put down. Murder. <laughs> yeah. Like, I was like, what did you do to like a rival direction direction government? Did you go? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you just So why did it go someone? away? It just, it just did. Um, I think there's something don't worry, there, some drama. It was revived. Oh, good. Yes. In uh, in 1726, under the Hanoverians, the groom of the stool began to be named in the London Gazette. John Chamberlain oh. wrote that while Lord Chamberlain has oversight of all the officers belonging to the king's chamber, the precinct of the king's bedchamber is wholly under the groom of the stool. He's in charge. He's just in charge charge. of the king. (laughs) And now called the gentleman of the bedchamber. Okay. Which really, as I'm reading this, is just more like a valet. Sounds so. That sounds more like a lover, honestly. The gentleman Uh, of the bedchamber. It really does. Just sounds like the dude you're banging. Yeah. Says the the Hanoverians weren't banging. They were not banging. I don't know anything about them. I know. I'm being an idiot. (laughs) Please move on. They that that just... goes to me. I'll take the hit. But yeah. Anyway, so they brought it back. They brought it back um, to gentlemen of the bedchamber. Ooh. Resume. And uh, by 1740, the groom of the stool. Oh, the stole. Oh, that's right. It changed. The stole? To not stole. make any sense. Yeah. Yeah. Now he was stealing from the chamber. <laughs> right, because so... they had care of the entire king's wardrobe. And I guess wardrobe and butthole together. Here's, That's a lot of responsibility. This is where the finance thing comes in because they would call the king's wardrobe part of his like, okay. oh, where are you going to get there? All right. I did a whole tab on someone robbing the king's wardrobe. Oh, no, 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 no. I was I was into it. Go for it. No, no, just, no. That's what there, it there's... means. Like his personal jewelry and clothes. Oh, and, and poop. Apparently chamber pot. Yeah. Yeah. Chamber pot. That's right. Chamber finance. Were um, were these people like a, at all like medically trained? Like, was this sort of like a GI of its day as well, or is it literally just in charge of like ass just wiping? Just a dude. <laughs> yeah. Was there any like Lord? Perhaps you should engage in more fiber, or no, there's nothing of that. <laughs> yeah, it, it just seemed to be uh, held by a random Anyone. courtier. Yeah. Um, wow. So in uh, the My Lady Jane show, it ends up happening to uh, Jane's mother as a punishment um, oh. to assist uh, Queen Mary as groom oh. of the stool. Um, and I was just like, hold up, what is this? Um, no, 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 no this to... can't be real. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> That's real. That's a real thing. Well, if you think uh, about it, they're wearing like, huge changed. dresses and like it's probably hard oh, yeah. to go to the bathroom. Oh, that's a well, good point. I didn't even thought of that. Yeah. Chairs that had a hole yeah. in it. Like, even when I was getting married, I remember being like, I guess I am on my own. I have to try to figure out how to go to the bathroom in yeah. this dress. And it was like, yeah. just like, 
hiking it up. I would have loved to have a groom of the stool. Yeah. That's, you know, I've heard of that being a thing on wedding days. Made of I honor. have luckily no in in-depth experience of that. I can get remarried. That's why so I can, can smile again. again. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yes. So the final <laughs> cut, the final cut in 1901, uh, when Edward ascended, uh, acceded to the throne as King, King Edward, Edward the Seventh in 1901, uh. he discontinued the office of the groom of the stool. So Victoria Another used it up until she died. Sucks. That, yeah, Edward the Seventh's not the Nazi. Edward the Eighth is the oh, Nazi. Who? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I see that. Like, I'm what was Edward the Seventh's people's... deal? He was just a dude. Yeah. He's just a dude who didn't like yeah. the stool, the groom of the stool. Yeah, I guess not. I guess he was like, "Don't touch me." Yeah, pretty much. I can, I can I understand know. that. I would be deeply uncomfortable with the groom of the stool. Like, don't just touch for the record. me. Yeah, yeah. But, I got my truly, bidet. That's all I need. Prince That's Albert your groom of the and stool. Their son. That is my groom of the stool. I'm going to start calling it that when I go to the bathroom. Yeah. yeah. Wait, Prince Albert what? Oh, yeah. Oh, Prince Albert and uh, and their son. So Queen Victoria, Prince Albert, mm-hmm. and their son, Edward, Prince of Wales, employed similar courtiers. Like, they, they oh. all used them. Mm. Mm-hmm. But when Edward well, uh, became king, it was like, He's like, no I'm more. done with this. He was the one that they thought was uh, Jack, not Jack the Ripper, but um, Edward the Seventh was one of the ones they were like, he may have been Jack oh. the Ripper because he would just go that. bang people down in White, yeah. Ca- White, 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 what? White Hall? White, no, White Chapel. Chapel. Yeah. Yeah. Just, I'm um, loading my knowledge just, on you. Dumb stuff. Uh, this is no, the no, wrong no. place for that, Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> I just... I just heard um, <laughs> someone saying that a popular theory about Jack the Ripper is it's Edgar Degas. I've the heard that too, too, but yeah, I haven't. I didn't look very hard into it, but he was insane. But I don't yeah. know. But uh, for, I for all it. the fans uh, following, yeah, it was part um, of it. Yeah, uh, there is a list of all the grooms of the stool on the Wikipedia oh article. Mm. Oh, like, are there a yeah. lot? Actually, yeah, oh, there's hundreds. Tons. I'm okay. sure, tons. hundreds. I don't know, probably like 50. I'm, I wonder I if there's one up. who lived through like multiple different kings. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Well, That'd that wasn't like, too hard to, to do. In what some was that of, movie? Some of the time. The, the White House one? Is it the, is it the butler? What am I thinking of? Where he's the butler, like, no. the butler for like a bunch of different presidents. Oh, yeah. I think it's yeah. called. Mm. It's the butler, right? I don't know. I'm confusing it. Anyway, but that, but for the, but you should call it the groom of the stool, and you get to see like the history of England through the perspective of this guy who cleaned buttholes of every different king that went yeah, through. Yeah, that would be perfect. <laughs> I think that's an Academy Award winner right there. Yep. <laughs> oh, Winston Churchill's ancestor was one of them. He was what? one. Oh no, sorry. Oh, his ancestor. Yeah, Sarah Churchill. Malta, Yalta, not Malta. <laughs> Yalta. Yeah, exactly. he was over there. Just yeah. Yeah. Now, He's now helping I'm out Churchill. This list. Listen, Churchill, he, he was having a tough time there. As deep as the groom of the stool, man. <laughs> I'm deep. I'm deep. I'm as deep as the groom of the stool right now. Wow. So lots of by, people. So, sorry, tell me again. What year is it officially that it goes away? 1901. 1901. So we haven't had one for 123 years on the record officially. Is it? In? Off the record. I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Off the record, I think there's different ones. I and there was just one different names. on record before the Tudor monarchy. Oh. 1455, oh, yeah. William oh, Grimsby was yeoman Grimsby. of the stool. <laughs> yeoman, yeoman of the stool. <laughs> yeoman of the stool. <laughs> Bill Grimsby. <laughs> Billy Grimsby. <laughs> <laughs> yeoman of the stool <laughs> has had MP. enough. Hold on, I almost yeah. read that as MVP. Most MVP valuable player of butthole for cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> it just sounds like now it's an 80s movie. Bill Yeoman has had enough of your shit, so he decided <laughs> to do something about it. <laughs> and he's just oh him just killing the king. Is that what he's gonna do? It turns into like a like a Quentin Tarantino like bloodbath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd watch that. He's, spring, he's got water guns. Are there? <laughs> Amazing oh, imagery. Um, cool. Uh, is there oh, anything else awesome. you want to say about that? Mm, me. No. Yeah. yeah. No. Not that That's I know. That's awesome. Yeah. Nice. Thanks for All sharing. Right. <laughs> Wait, I wonder Thank if that's where sharing. the word stool comes from. I have to look that up now. The stool. Mm, okay. I mean, like, maybe they were having to sit on a stool next to the monarch. 
<laughs> I'm just like, Wait. I, I mean, yeah. Wait, weird. And then, of course, the double yeah, entendre the of, of the word stool. stool. Sitting okay, on the stool, so yeah. waiting for the stool. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting deeply into that this. That seems like a very polite euphemism for like you're sitting on the stool and waiting on the that's stool. like the word that you use. Yeah. Waiting for the stool see. bus. Waiting for the stool bus. That's a good one. Stool bus. All aboard the stool bus. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get out of this. I can't keep reading my stool. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Here we go. Oh, yeah. It's just called stool because it, it, that, that's what they called the thing you sit on anyway. And it looks kind of like mm-hmm. a throne. Yeah. Like yeah, having sense. stool was his throne, and then mm-hmm. he also had one to anyway. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. So he had the alternate version cool. with a hole in it. Beautiful. And you- Kavi, are you next or am I? It's up to you. Whatever you'd like. Do you want to go I first, don't or should who I go? Did it last. It uh, doesn't matter. I'll go. Are you excited to go? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Thank you so much, you Alex. Got? That was enlightening. Um. You're in welcome. a beautiful way. Okay. So. Alex, Kaveh, as you well know, Kaveh, I love the yeah. Wikipedia list. That's the list you of do. longest living organisms. I always like to totally. find out who, what's lived the longest, hence Jonathan the tortoise. And right. uh, oh, yes, old trees. And, and one of these, I was like, well, ha- what's the longest lived cat? Since I tend to like cats. And oh. I, found, I found out that the longest cat. Cat people cat, coming out October 8th. October Sorry, 8th. <laughs> you could buy it anywhere books are sold. Uh, oh my gosh. Get a free tote bag. Free tote bag. You know the oh. drill. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Trying to make uh, my friends money. <laughs> it's working. Yeah. Also by mom. Sorry, mom I de- but I derailed your podcast by trying to pimp your book. I don't care. I don't care. Buy your book. Okay. Buy your book, damn it. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, oldest living it. cat. Anyway, yeah. the oldest living cat was a cat named Cream Puff. And Cream Puff lived from 1967 until 2008. Whoa, this cat took, whoa. This cat lived 38 years and three days, which is wow. double the amount of the average oh. lifespan of a cat. So My this God. is roughly 168 human years. So like, <laughs> <laughs> shouldn't have lived this long, right? So I was like, oh, oh. that cat's ancient. How did that? And it was like pretty healthy. And so I started looking through the list of like oldest cats and I see a few other ones and then I noticed something. All these cats are owned by the same person. Really? And it was this, yes. A lot of these Guinness World Record holder old cats are all owned, or were all owned by the same person named Jake Perry. Jake now, Perry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about Jake Perry and his insane ancient menagerie of cats, because this dude, I don't know what he, he, he has a reason. He's like, here's, here's why they live long, but I'm going to get into it. So. Okay. Before I even answer why Cream Puff lived to be forever to, to be old like that, he you got to know that he was born in 1967, the middle mm-hmm. of the summer, and shortly after he was taken in by a local plumber and family man, Jake Perry. So Jake Perry is now in his 90s, but at the time he was like raising kids. He was a uh, he was like described as one of the nicest guys around. Loved cats, loved animals. Um, was a single parent, so he was like really going going for Real it. Real good doing, dude. Real Did you say dude. where this was, by the way? No, I will, though. It's okay. in Austin, Texas. Right. Okay. So he was described by the Austin Chronicle as the, quote, best retired plumber with some names to, claims to fame, who, unlike his cousin, Texas Governor Rick Perry, he is well-known and well-liked. Oh. <laughs> so, oh. Yes. <laughs> this is Rick Perry's oh. cousin. <laughs> wow. Cat lover. And, uh, mm, cat people for oh. the win. <laughs> Absolutely. And everyone loved him and they all hated his cousin. Yeah. Come on. So I don't know how like in contact with each other they were, but they were cousins, first cousins. So he's been, uh, the 80s come around and he starts adopting like hundreds of cats. And he kind of becomes like this. Um... It's all that 80s cocaine. Yeah. He's just the, cocaine, the stock market's the blowing energy. up. Just cocaine, <laughs> Reaganomics, cats. city oh, on a hill. Blow. Just blow. Just, it's like. Endless lines, you know? Yeah. Cats yeah. doing it. Like cats uh, trying to paw it. Cat, yeah, pawing it around. <laughs> oh, Gumming it. Wild. <laughs> Licking it up. Okay. So, yeah, 80s, he starts kind of being his own, like, I wouldn't say shelter, but kind of. He'd go to these shelters okay. and be like, okay, there's some cats on the list. Of, you know, they're going to kill these cats after a week. And he'd wait and wait and wait till the very last minute, make sure they wouldn't get adopted. And then he'd take all of them home and he would take care of them and then rehome them. Okay, so okay. at one point, overall, 
500 or more cats went through his care. <gasps> and oh. at one point- 500 open six, cats. 500 open oh. cats. <laughs> open. Oh, no. Maybe not open, but 500 Actually, adopted cats. We'll get to the open part because there is a part. <gasps> yeah. Guys, this goes. This gets crazy. You have Rick to consume Perry the flesh of other cats. Plumber, That's how they live for 38 like, years. Groom of the stool yeah. already. Oh, <laughs> Plumber. This is the modern day groom of the stool, except he's a groom of the stool to the, the common folk. Mm. Uh, anyway, so Jake is like cat machine, right? Just like churning out healthy cats and getting them adopted. And um, some were like show cats. He was like, I'm going to get, you know, he had like sphinxes that he would, it would win shows. Are you dancing? I'm doing my cat show dance. <laughs> Hello, I'm in a cat show. Um, Hi, cat walk. I'm the groom of the stool. <laughs> um, <laughs> gross. It always ends up about poop. That's the thing. We do these. <laughs> What's this? I'm going in a backward motion. Oh, you're motion, wiping. <laughs> so it looks like you're doing. It looks like you're wiping. Oh. We're gross. Okay, so. So some of these cats were his own. Some of them were show cats. And uh, in 1999, one of his cats named Grandpa uh, was Good name. was said to be the oldest living cat. And it made, he made it into the Greatest Book of World Records. And Grandpa died at age 34. And dude, Grandpa mm. was his favorite. He sent birthday invitations to Grandpa's birthday to um. Bill Clinton, to like the governor. And people did would come to go this at least? <laughs> no. Socks did not show his face. Come. Stuck up. But Bill Clinton sent a letter saying, I'm sorry, I can't attend Grandpa's party. With best wishes. Grandpa died later that year, so maybe that was the out of heartbreak. The catalyst. Fault. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, the catalyst, catalyst for his. But yeah, Grandpa. It... Anyway, so here's, here's the crazy thing Jake claims at least a third of the cats that go through his, his home live to be over 25. Which is Damn. unbelievable, and he, and here's how. Here's how he gave an interview, and he's like, "Here's how you get this guy's so cool. He's like this slow talking, like Texan, working class, awesome dude." And he says it's all about diet, environment, sure. and mm-hmm. love. And yeah. the diet is regular old cheap, like store dried store cat food, right? Just the stuff you buy on like shelves, but. Mm-hmm. The key is is giving them eggs, turkey bacon, broccoli, and a little bit of coffee every day. So he would Whoa. caffeinate he would caffeinate these cats, and then every few days he would give them each an eyedropper full of red wine to circulate the arteries. So he's between treating these coffee cats like, and a little bit of red wine makes sense actually. It does, and it's funny because like veterinarians are like, we absolutely don't recommend you give your cat alcohol or caffeine. <laughs> Like but. It, there's literally no studies proving other that, that it works, and so he his veterinarian was like, I don't know what this guy does, but I mean, listen, veterinarians, working. what like twenty years old? This guy, like consistent record right. of twenty five and thirty eight year old cats. I'm gonna go with yeah. the plumber. Thank you very Man. much. I'm going to too. Anyway, another thing that might help with their longevity is this environment he makes so this dude has Mm -hmm. converted his entire house to these cats so there's like hamster tubes that are the size for cats like going through every room so these cats have like full run of the house they have like a jungle gym they the whole house is converted to just their happiness and then in one room he converted his garage into a theater with chairs and lights and he puts nature documentaries on, and all the cats just come in and watch them like uh, humans. <laughs> Isn't that cute? That's really cute. So, like David this, Attenborough, this little shit. Old Texan. Yes, this little old Texan man is like time for your movies, and puts on like bird chirping, and all the cats are like, yeah. He also has a catio, and he has a train mm-hmm. that he has going around the house for the cats. A catio, a cat train, a catio, a cat patio. You don't, oh. you don't Have you never idiot. heard of the catio, Kave? <laughs> no, he hasn't. He doesn't like cats. This is the first time I've heard of it. <laughs> oh. Just kidding. He likes cats. Um, I'm fine with cats. I know. I'm just being, I'm a, I'm being an idiot. I'm neutral. Oh. Neutralized. Um, so they had an outdoor enclosure. <laughs> <laughs> I had some connections in my head. Uh, That's good. And his, na- his neighbors describe him as his home as a cat playground. And so just... Just picture a house just swarming with cats, and that's how you get your cats to live old. Does he, does uh, he drive them around in a anymore? Cadillac? 
Oh my, he should. Cat alack. And then also he says that he has individual, uh, very close relationships with each cat. So he pays individual attention to all of them, built relationships, and celebrates their birthdays. And he's like, I think that's why they love to live so long, because I celebrate their birthdays. And I'm like, I think they're cats, but whatever. Yeah. That's fine, Jake. Famously, cats um, love birthdays. Yeah. He buys them hats. He buys them gifts. He dresses them up. And at Christmas, he has the train for them to ride on, and they like riding on it. So this is just a cat circus in this little Texas yeah. house. And his longtime veterinarian is pretty much just in awe. He's been treating his cats for years, and he just sort of shrugs, and he's like, yeah, I guess he is a magic cat man. And uh, he says most of Perry's cats live to be at least 25, but admits it's impossible to know their exact ages, saying, quote, unquote, it's not like you can cut them open and count the rings like a That's tree. That's the joke I always make, is cutting off cutting someone's open. foot, and that way you can see all like, the rings really? on the inside of the bone. Yeah. I'm feeling concerned. I'm feeling concerned <laughs> where this is, that, is headed. dude. Oh, so here's where it does get a little morbid. Mm. Um, like all animals, they die before we do. And so Jake Perry has had to, to bury a lot of cats. <laughs> oh, he does bury uh, a lot of them, yeah. But he oh, does have, don't worry, he has a pet cemetery in his backyard. Yep. And yep. it is manicured and beautiful. And the, the tombstones are made from, like, he gets them made. And um, he commissions uh, baby coffins to be made. <laughs> Uh, for each of the dead cats, so oh. he will he will buy a baby coffin, have a full blown funeral. That other cats cat- go to, I assume. Yes, there's a wake. Did he get them all dressed leave- up in like black suits and ties and stuff? I don't know. I hope so. So it seems so like something he would wake. do. <laughs> Probably does. The cat I saw that was in one of the baby caskets uh, did have some like beautiful like ruffles and stuff. Um, That's nice. And he has the full ceremony for these cats, and he all the, he lets all the cats come up and sniff them. It's like a, it's a wake, and then he has made it clear that when he dies, he wants to be buried in that pet cemetery with his beloved cats. Mm. Um, well, speaking of death, nowadays he does not in- adopt any more cats because he's like ninety five. This dude is like gonna live forever and he's not adopting more Hopefully. he just has one more cat left and that cat's only name one is one more cat left and its name is jean-claude van damme <laughs> yes <laughs> yes jean um claude claude exactly. van damme i love it <laughs> now a couple of the cat's names that i particularly liked were uh cowboy um jimmy carter the cat uh <laughs> and buffy the vampire that's it. Buffy the what, Vampire. No Richard Nixon not named Slayer? cats? What not is this Nazi? shit? I, I bet they should have. Right. No Slayer, just Buffy Dick the Nixon Vampire. Nixon erasure. Just Buffy the Vampire. Um, just just yeah. fan fiction twist. Like. Yes. Like, it's like he heard the name of the show. He heard the name of the show and he was like, that sounds good. <laughs> but uh, then there was another cat I, named Slayer who would always like be next to Buffy the Vampire. Buffy. Yep. And then it was, it was just a one two cat show. <laughs> The article, I forgot to say the article, is called How to Raise a 165-Year-Old Cat by Christina Couch. And in the article, Christina is talking about how she meets this guy because he's her plumber. And <laughs> he comes over and she he's like talking about how his cats live forever. And she's like, who is this crazy dude? Who's this crazy guy? And he, he's like, yeah, I got a home theater for them and kind of telling her everything. And she was like, huh? And finally he shows her pictures and she's like, I got to do an article on him. But then he just ghosts oh, yeah. her. For like years, what? no. Apparently, he had like cancer, and he was like, "Sorry about that, oh, I had cancer." I thought he was like, "I don't trust the media or something." Right. Well, she went and poked around his house, and she's like, asked his neighbors and stuff. Anyway, reporter stuff. Finally, he granted her an interview, and he sent her. He let her take pictures of all of these different cats. Let me show you. I'm gonna send you yeah. a few photos. Okay, so here is Jake. Okay. I love him so much. Jake is wholesome. Oh. Uh. Did he's, it go through? Uh, he's wearing like a camo hat. He's wearing yeah. like a plaid short sleeve shirt that you would get at like Mervyn's. I don't think Mervyn's. Is yeah. Mervyn. Is Mervyn's? Mervyn's. Still Mervyn's. No. Mervyn's. <laughs> I don't know what around. Mervyn's is now. Uh, uh, Kohl's, I guess. Kohl's is probably yeah. the yeah. And then he's just he's just wearing some like, I'm assuming Levi's. Wrangler jeans. That's some yeah, you know, Dillard's, you know. He's, Dillard's, he's a working yeah. man. And he's got the most gnarly His sunglasses are intense though. Yeah. Here is oh. Cream Puff. Oh. And he would do these full blown like JC Penny photo shoots with these cats, like yeah. posing them. He'd in go baskets. get his plaid shirt and then and he'd go get a cat. He'd get his portrait. plaid shirt. 
exactly. And uh, it's there's like something someone buy at a convention too. Oh, a hundred percent. This dude would have loved CatCon. Oh, he would have oh, had yeah. a great time. Um, and this here he is with Grandpa. Uh, Grandpa is like this no. ancient-looking sphinx cat. <laughs> like, uh, oh, I just love these photos because you see his gnarled old hands holding these yeah. beautifully posed cat mm-hmm. photos. And here he is with Cowboy and Jimmy Carter. Um, they're both also sphinxes. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, so he's very proud of all these cats. And he's he's got, don't worry, he's got a pet cemetery. And he wants, one of his dreams is to actually open a pet cemetery for other people to bury their animals. And offer the services of the baby caskets. I can't say the word baby casket without feeling kind of icky. But um, I, I wonder uh, what that process is. Like, does he have to go to the city and just be like, I want my home to become like a monument of some sort or like a, I don't know. a protected building? Because it's got you said it's all customized for cat stuff. Yeah. You can just donate um, it to the city and then have that be part of the cemetery, I guess. There's probably some make sort it of easier, like not easy, but cafe. legal process. Okay, it's interesting. Yeah. I don't even know yeah. if he's alive. I tried checking, but I don't think he's. I didn't find an obituary, but he should he's be about ninety-five now. <laughs> also, like, thing. I, sorry, I don't know if you no, can be buried please. in your own backyard. Like, it depends do the, on the, the animal. municipality. Yeah, because yeah. there are. Yeah. I thought this was America places. last time. I, I have. <laughs> <laughs> I have be- because my dad used to oh. make the joke when, when we didn't have health insurance, he'd be like, don't get sick or else you're going to get buried in the backyard without <laughs> health insurance. <laughs> and it, it sounds dark, but we all thought it was funny. No, yeah, no. I get like, we can't afford a funeral. We'll just go back to the backyard. Yeah. And I looked yeah. it up Also, once, I'm like, like why own I? a home? Like, if I can't even bury my, like, I'm going to pay right. more money to get buried somewhere right? else. What the shit is my backyard for? They're Interesting, because I was thinking anyway. about all these cat funerals. Yeah. I was like, wow, this is expensive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. I think he raises money for the funerals. But yeah. that's Jake Perry, Rick Perry's uh, way better cousin. Yeah, who way is cooler. the cat daddy of all, you know? Cat daddy. Yeah. Wow. I feel like I just talked straight through that without letting you guys talk at all. No, My not at all. I, you know, I was just proud of you uh, for how succinct, <laughs> succinctly you were able to uh, go through that article, unlike me. So. Oh, it's hard. It's I wasn't like this. It's taken a lot of practice. Yeah. You were both excellent. And the whole point of this show is to get your a la carte have experience fun. of different styles of storytelling. Mm-hmm. Okay. What um, do you have so, for us? Yeah. Uh, well, thank you for being the yeah. cat daddy of this podcast. Um, You're welcome. I'm just going to go back people. to being the regular non cat daddy mm. as much as I can. <laughs> uh, okay. So. <laughs> You're more like a whale By the time daddy. You love whales. Whale go daddy. <laughs> <laughs> you always end up talking about whales or like this is animals. not about whales actually for oh, once or sharks what? no sharks Wait, no animals in this stool, one. right it's about <laughs> captain of stool <laughs> captain? sorry sorry <laughs> groom of the stool so i'm the stool like captain, captain of this podcast i'm gonna get a hat i'm gonna get like one of those sailors yeah. hat that says captain of stool, stool uh, captain. or stool captain anyway I'm going to letter in stooling. That's like, you know, when you're in varsity jackets. Oh, yeah. I lettered in theater. I'm lettered in stool. uh, 24. Yay. Anyway. (laughs) So my tap. So by the time this airs, the Olympics will have been over, but they've been on my home nonstop because Sarah just loves to watch them and uh, she doesn't stop. And uh, sure, it's cool. We all played some sports as kids and maybe even a little bit in high school, but Clearly nothing. Alex note, is shaking your right? head. No, <laughs> not even. Did, did you play any sports? Oh, I did kendo in college. Oh, that counts. Uh, oh, okay. Which, if yeah. you're not familiar, is a Japanese sword fighting sport. That, um, yeah, it's cool. That's a huge flex. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I did a little league, like little like yeah. soccer and baseball. I played in no, like kendo. two softball games of a friend yeah, yeah. who needed someone, and I was like, "Oh, this is not for me." No. We're not we're not here to compete. But fun fact, I did play with someone who went on to be an Olympian. Oh, you did? Yeah, and by played with, I mean I warmed the bench for. Oh, <laughs> Ooh, and by sport. warmed the bench for, I mean I was actually in the overflow area away from the bench warmers because I was basically on the team in case a tragic event killed the first, second, and third <laughs> string players. <laughs> so the groom of the groom of the groom of the stool. Listen. Yeah. <laughs> Jokes on them because I graduated and went to an art school no one's ever heard of, and I started a very mid podcast. So who's laughing now? Clearly not our audience. All uh, 150 people who listen to this. 
<laughs> they're laughing. There's more um, than that. I did, I did play with, um, his name was Peter Varelis. He went on to Stanford and then he went to play in the Olympics as a water polo player. He's a lefty. Good guy. As a what player? Very talented. Volleyball? Lefty, which in water polo, if you're a lefty, oh, water that's polo, an asset. That's right. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Good right? job, That's Peter. my connection to the Olympics. Yeah. Not whales, anyway, so water. <laughs> that's true. It's still aquatic. So <laughs> yep. it, it's cool to be an artist, but frankly, we will never achieve glory in the same way. And I will never be able to spit in the face of England as I stand on a higher platform than them and hold my fist in the air with a gold medal around my neck for drawing a funny, insane cartoon that minimizes 9-11 to a tasteless punchline. <laughs> at least, at least not today. Oh. But for a moment in time, I could have. What? That's right. Today, I'm going to talk about a brief period where one could win an Olympic medal for art. What? Uh... I briefly, okay, tell me all about it. Do you guys know about this? Yeah. So from 1912 to 1948, gold, silver, and bronze medals were handed out in Olympic art competitions across five categories, architecture, literature, music, painting, and sculpture. Whoa. This set of awards was named the Pentathlon of the Muses with its winners decided by an international jury. This is true. That's awesome. Because that's all right? very Greek anyway, because the Greeks were like, we like art. They sound yeah. just like that. So, it's exactly right. So all entries were required to be original and sport themed. Uh, artists could also submit multiple works, meaning they could chalk up more than one win in a competition. And what? over its 38 year run, the juries uh, awarded a total of 151 medals to original works in the fine arts inspired by athletic endeavors. This story goes back to our boy, Hannah Pierre de Coubertin, from episode uh-huh. 21 of this podcast, yeah. which was Marathon Moon. The one Moon. that like, what did he do? Oh, he was uh, he, he was like instrumental in getting the Olympics to be in Chicago. No, right? he was like the dude. He like created oh, he the Olympics. He brought the Olympics he brought back. back. Yeah. He's the main guy. I remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> episode 21, go listen to that. If you haven't, Pierre it's a fun de, de one. Coubertin. Famously against so, racism. So we have against that. Against racism. To, good for him. Founder of the modern Olympic Games. Apparently saw art competitions as integral to his vision as well. Because to him, what it meant to be a true Olympian was someone who was not only athletic, but also skilled uh-huh. in music and literature. Much like you said. Yes. Initially, he struggled to convince overextended local organizers of the first few Olympic Games in Athens, St. Louis, and Paris oh, that St. art Louis. competitions were necessary. But they didn't budge. But he remained adamant. Quote, There is only one difference between our Olympiads and plain sporting championships, and it is precisely the contests of art as they existed in the Olympiads of ancient Greece, where sport exhibitions walked in equality with artistic exhibitions. Wait, really? They would do them back in the day? Hmm. I don't know. According to this guy. According to this Yahoo. He brought it back. One dude. You know. He can see whatever he wants. Listen, I, I didn't start the Olympics, so I can't say anything that cool. I think and you I'm should bring back the art Olympics. Up. I think so, too. Fortunately, oh, it gets great. Fortunately, by the time the 1912 games in Stockholm rolled around, he was able to complete his vision with one caveat. Every work had to be somehow inspired by the concept of sport. So oh. musical compositions, which glorified a sporting ideal in athletic competition or an athlete or which were intended for presentations in connection with sporting festivals would be considered so long as they didn't exceed the one hour time allotment. Meanwhile, in literature, a 20,000 word limit was placed on a category divided into dramatic works, lyrical works, and epic poetry. All you could really get like a huge, long, epic poem and win a gold medal. Exactly. In this theory. is cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so you're probably all wondering, right? Like, what the shit? How come I never even heard of this? Yeah. Yeah. Did Picasso win a bunch of like medals and just throw them in the garbage? I mean, I would. Yeah. Did famed vaginal painter Georgia O'Keeffe have a flower garden littered with Olympic gold? (laughs) Famed vaginal painter. (laughs) I mean, that's what they are. Well, the answer isn't some wild conspiracy like you might think, but it is dumb. Apparently. It's dumb? You couldn't. Yeah, it's dumb. You couldn't be a professional artist in order to compete. (laughs) <laughs> wait what what boo are you kidding yes so 
Yep. In a hysterical irony by today's standards, apparently at one point in the Olympics, didn't want a shit ton of money to influence the outcome of who won medals. Oh, because artists make a lot of money. Professional artists are out there with tons of money. <laughs> Still. So Alex, go. Pierre. Yeah, say it, say it. Oh, no, I'm just like... Still confused, like how, how, how money? Yeah, I don't know. I think most people were confused, which you'll learn throughout the course of this tab. People were like, well, "This, none of this makes sense." This is what happens when you have an when you have a category for a bunch of artists, right? It's disorganized at best. So Edward Hopper couldn't just slide into yeah. competing against someone who submitted a self portrait they did in a paint and wine night. <laughs> you had to only have paint and wine night paintings because they were oh, amateurs. Oh no! Oh. If I had to go to a paint and wine paint or judging competition, I would leave. I'd so I went leave. to one of those classes once. Tell us oh. about it. <laughs> I was the asshole who brought her own paintbrushes. <laughs> I would. I, I don't want to use like, theirs. I was like, if I gotta like use their their shitty tempera paints, then uh, oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring my own brushes, and it and it worked yeah. out. It worked out for me. Um, mm. What did you paint? I koi fish. Yeah. Do you have Boy it? fish. Maybe somewhere. I think it's in the somewhere. garage. I see. Nowhere close by. Nowhere I'm close by. I've always wondered what those are like. I'm like, I'm not like bashing on them. Like they're no, for no, people no. who have fun. But, uh, but I did fun? get offered a, a teaching job to do them. <laughs> you <laughs> did? It's awesome. Oh no. Did. did you do it? No. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, they're like, you can hold a paintbrush. How about you come yeah. here yeah. and do this? Yeah. They're like, have you ever thought about teaching classes? Like, have you ever thought about like, <laughs> You know, do you want a job? And I was like, oh, I have a job <laughs> as a professional artist. <laughs> yeah. Do they give you? Do they give you like a prompt? How does it work? The artist hosting the class like did the painting, um, and has like a final one there, and then they grab a blank canvas and then they they start it anew and and show you how to step by step basically do it. Oh, I see. Yeah. It's not like a, everybody paint whatever they want. It's yeah, like you have to draw one specific thing. You have no, to you do have to copy. draw the one specific thing. Yeah, I didn't know that. Well, that, I see, I see. Uh, nothing is worse. That sounds horrible. It sounds like a prison. <laughs> it's fine. I'm glad people enjoy it, and that is why it's there. Okay? Listen, some people respond to structure because they don't know. It's too overwhelming to start with. Uh, and so it's good no, for I'm a little glad. guidance. Yeah. Chaos. That's what um, I'm saying. I'm just yes. saying for me, oh, and I'm glad there's paint nights. Uh, and of course... This being an art competition for art people, no one was like super good at keeping track of anything or like <laughs> archiving stuff. Yeah. And so there's not a whole lot of available availability <laughs> in terms of like historic record. That's right. I love that it's just lost to history simply because <laughs> a bunch of artists did it. <laughs> except, except for, you guessed it. Oh, no. The Nazis. The Nazis. Oh. No. Yeah. <laughs> How did I know? The 19, what, 44 Olympics was it? Or 38 Uh, or something? 38. At the opening of the 1936 Olympic art competition, (laughs) pencil dick urethra sniffer and minister of propaganda, Joseph (laughs) Goebbels. He's such a piece of crap. That dude's the worst. They're all bad. He he reminded his audience that each (laughs) good use it in your Olympic competition for art. Yep. Uh. He reminded the audience that each work entered in the competition was required to have been created within the last four years. And this restriction, he declared, enables us to derive from the exhibition an estimate of international conditions. Basically, he was like, yo, Nazi crew, mount up and make some epic Nazi paintings and shit so the world knows that we're absolute human garbage. (laughs) Man, they always they ruin literally everything, everything. Yeah, we can't tell um, a home- story without them getting their d- d- dumb little fingers in it. It's true. And uh, home field fingers. advantage worked great for Germany that year. The international jury consisted of 29 German judges and 12 from other European countries. So Love. more than double. German artists who won five of the nine gold medals awarded that year. By contrast, their combined gold medal count from the 28 and 32 Summer Olympics had come to a grand total of one. Whoa. Um, so they suck mm-hmm. balls. Fully German musicians <laughs> they suck like also swept the musical composition for solo and chorus category. A pair of German brothers called Werner and Walter March took home mm. golden architecture for their design Reich, Reich Sportfield. 
The oh. latter was based on the Olympiastadion, Olympiastadion, an original structure designed by Werner that had been built to scale right there in Berlin over the course of the previous two years. It was currently housing the Olympics competition in handball, equestrian, soccer, track and field, and is in fact still in use today. They, wow. Huh. Still using that, huh? Survived the war? Yeah. Wow. Um, you here's my favorite part. You know who didn't survive the role? You know who didn't survive the war Nazis. is Joseph Goebbels. <laughs> Joseph That's Goebbels. Unalived himself as he should have. So Yeah, I should have done it before any of this even happened. Uh, so for some insane reason, <laughs> juries in those days <laughs> had the right to withhold a first, second, or third place prize or all of the above when the works failed to meet the standards that they imposed. Huh? So... Basically, they were like, uh, there's no first, second, or third place. No one gets an award. Everything sucks ass. So, so it's like being back in art school. Basically. So <laughs> juries were known to withhold as many as 13 art medals in a single Olympics. So wow. there were years where people competed. No one got a medal. They were like, just what? go home and try again in four years. But they wouldn't allow Literally professional art artists. And they would not allow professional what? artists to submit. But no, sorry. It's not up to standard. But also, no professionals allowed. Yeah. Uh, mm. As you can imagine, this was a huge incentive for people to submit their best work. Hate the Nazis. That's uh, wild. Let's see. Let's send you some stuff. So mm. here's our boy. Oh, yeah. Here's Pierre. He's just chilling, doing his thing, walking around. I believe that's him in the hat with the cane. Or I could be wrong, actually. Oh, I don't know. I'm so excited. Uh, and here's a picture of some of the medals oh, look that at you him. can actually see as well. Well, whoa, cool, I guess. If you were yeah. able to get them. Oh, yeah, I got them. So, judging by the medals won, Luxembourg yeah. painter Jean Jacobi is the most successful oh. Olympic artist, winning the gold medal for his 1924 painting, Etude du Sport, and for oh, his hell. drawing Rugby in 1928, which Just I rugby. believe are these two paintings right here. Let's see. Which you can see, see on the screen. See if this guy deserved the gold. They're pretty good. Oh, yeah. They're not bad. Uh -huh. Okay. They're not bad at all. They're excellent. Bunch of rippling muscles. I'm just kidding. Rippling. Yeah. They, um, they, he's got really good movement. Like, that's that captures, yeah. like, yeah. the chaos of the game really well. Yeah. Uh, what's his name? The the boxer. Um, George Bellows, I believe, is his name, the painter I'm talking about. Mm -mm. It kind of reminds me of George Bellows a little bit. Uh Swiss artist Alex Diggleman won three medals, a gold one in 1936 for his poster A Rosa e Placard, which is right here. Did you say Diggleman? So, Diggleman. 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 Whoa, that thing's cool. Yeah, so at one oh. point with the within the arts and illustration, they started splitting them into like design and stuff, so it wasn't just general drawings. Yeah. Danish writer Joseph Peterson won a silver medal on three occasions, 1924, 1932, and 1948. Mm, good for him, I guess. Um, two people won medals in both sport and art competitions. Oh, interesting. So this guy two right Olympians. here, Walter right. Winnens, won a gold oh, medal his... as a marksman. Look at that mustache. His mustache is, that is wild. Oh. He literally looks like the dad in uh, in Jumanji who is hunting the son. Oh my god, you're right. That's exactly what he looks like. He does. He has that exact I like facial how the hair. Mustache turns into a goatee. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's so, but not in the way you'd think. No, oh. it's impressive. That's an Olympic winning mustache. That is in the mustache. So speaking category. of Jumanji hunting his son, oh, Winnens won a gold medal as a marksman at the 1908 Summer oh. Olympics. In the running deer, which is a double shot competition. And then <laughs> he won a gold medal for his sculpture, an American Trotter. Oh. Which you can see here, which is a Let's see. fine sculpture. It's lovely. Oh, it's fun. Oh, looks like that guy is. You know what he looks like? He looks like the groom of the stool for that horse. He looks like the groom of the horse stool. Yeah. <laughs> Why is he? I don't like this sculpture. <laughs> I would. Would not have it, given him any medals. It's uncomfortable. <laughs> I don't. I, I don't like it. <sighs> Explain to the audience what's happening and why it makes it's, you uncomfortable. I'm not going to tell you. Okay, here's the thing. It looks like this guy. First of all, the horse is a horse, and then uh -huh. on the back, he's got like. Of course, of looks, course. What looks like <laughs> nice. Looks like this dude is holding onto the horse's tail while like squatting on top of two wheels that are okay. attached to the horse. Alex, you go. Yes, you probably I, know better. I I personally liken it to like um, 
in baseball, like the catcher, like standing behind yeah. at the pitch. And he's like just ready to catch the ball. And this guy's just like That's ready to catch anything that comes out of that horse. <laughs> the horse. He's just That's what it looks right like. against that horse's butt. Absolutely. Listen, what, you know what it looks like to me? What? A damn Olympic gold medal. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. Oh, man. Uh, the other person was Alfred Hayos of Hungary. I apologize, Hajos of Hungary. Mm-hmm. As a swimmer, he won two gold medals at the 1896 Athens Olympics. And then 28 huh. years later, he was awarded a silver medal in architecture for his stadium design co-design with Desso Lober. 28 mm, years apart. Name. That's crazy. Because I was going to say the 18-whatever Olympics, those were the very first ones since bringing them back. Uh, yeah, yeah. So he's he's double double dipper. Pierre himself was actually also among the winners. He was afraid really? the nerdists. Yeah, he was afraid that all the nerds of art dorks wouldn't draw enough entrance. So he penned the winning ode under the pseudonyms George Horod and Martin Eschbach, oh, leaving smart. the medal jury unaware that he was, in fact, the Max Martin of his time. Okay, you know what? I do respect that because he didn't say it was him, so he definitely won fair and square. All right. Uh, John but Copley. But he was a professional of, artist. Uh, no, or that's no. true. No, he was not. Was he not. was the professional Olympics organizer. Oh, uh, okay. So John Copley of Britain won one of the final uh-huh. medals awarded, a silver in 1948 for his engraving polo players, which you can see here, uh-huh. which is fine. It's f- Oh, it is fine. It's not bad. Why don't you describe it to the kids at home? Looks like some horses, you know? That's true. With people on them. Chiaroscuro. Got some chiaroscuro chiaroscuro. That's true. Got some good negative space Uh uh, in the legs there. (laughs) Pretty dramatic Giving it an art 101 critique. Got some good line work going on. Uh, That horse is terrifying. Looks like a skeleton. But yeah, looks like a bunch of polo players. They look fine. Looks fine. This is bronze. He was, this is bronze. He was 73 years old at the time and would be the oh. oldest medalist in oh. Olympic history. All right, got some that respect. That makes sense. After the 1948 Games, the Olympic art competitions were modified into a parallel art festival and exhibition held at the site of each summer and winter games. Oh, Basically, okay. they gave up. They did it for like one or two years because, you know, everyone was on hold during World War II. Mm-hmm. And then they came back to it and it was like, the uh, committee was like even more committed to being like absolute amateurs and people were like this shit sucks yeah. these rules are stupid this is not working correctly we hate all of this this is pointless <laughs> so they just stopped all of that all of it they're just like whatever bye do they, um, do they still have these like side by side things that come to the yeah Olympics? i think they like still have art. like the whatever like oh. art. it's not like competitions or anything but they have like exhibitions and festivals and okay stuff. but i will end with my favorite part of this whole story, the 151 medals that had been awarded to all those different countries were officially yeah. stricken from the Olympic record. No way! And currently, you didn't even get to keep them? <laughs> no, like, and just... currently do not count towards countries as current medal counts. <laughs> so you can't even be like, look, I was an Olympian, all right? That no. is so... Nullified. Sayonara. Just those three really count. You won it. Oh. It's messed up. They just were like, people were so irritated by it that they were like, we don't even they give a shit. They just deleted it? Yeah, they just deleted it. That's why I've it. never heard of it. You That's why what? I've never Classic. heard of it. Exactly. Wow. Classic. Oh, okay. Wow. So you could bring back, <laughs> now that they don't care. Also, now I'm like, who would compete now? How would they bring oh, money back so into good. the Art Olympics? No. It'd just be a bunch of like AI art. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, that's true. It would probably be like, we didn't tell him that it was AI and it won, and then it would be some marketing stunt for chat GPT. Uh, that like literally already chat happens GPT. all the time. Yeah. It did happen. There was uh, already that AI, AI art. Yeah. That, oh, yeah. That, well, AI that generated trash. It's not yeah. It could be like, we won an Olympic medal. Um. Anyway, so that's my tab wow. all about art in the Olympics and how it was... <laughs> correctly taken away because it was extremely poorly managed <laughs> and no one seemed to go back and want to fix it so they just left it out forever yeah, but did I feel they? like post-war is like we just gotta do new stuff anyway just they're like, out with the old anymore. artists aren't people the last, they don't do they're anything not people good. um we should just marginal <laughs> push them to the very edges of society nothing. it's fine yeah so nothing to the world Kaveh did you not read uh about they're talking about bringing back art 
in the Olympics for LA. Oh, I did huh? not see that. Yeah. No. <laughs> That's how I thought you like. Um... Oh, I missed that. Yeah, I just was yeah. reading um, the the article I found was from a couple of years ago. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, uh, very I think it was, like, recently. That's piece. how I found out about art in the Olympics. Oh, what did you learn? Tell us. Uh, pretty much that um, they're talking about bringing back some of the art competition in the Olympics for LA in 2028. Interesting. I'm here. I can compete. I know. I'm an absolute amateur. Hey, do you guys need some dog shit drawings of bad <laughs> things? You want some Mothman drawings? I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> look. Just look. wait till there's mid-podcast categories in the Olympics. Oh, the, uh, we the will Oscars. Sweep. The, uh, the Emmys. Yeah. What is it? What would it be? Uh, there's podcast awards. I forget what they're there called right is? now. Oh, yeah, there's like the Webbies. and <laughs> Potties. Oh, I don't know. There's other ones. Potties. The pot- Potties. I want the a potty. Stools. Again, stoolies. stool. <laughs> The stoolies. <laughs> the stoolies. We would definitely win uh, all the stoolies. We we do talk about it a lot. Alex, I don't know if you know it's your a part, part of, of a grand tradition on this podcast to, mm-hmm. to bring up uh, something poop related. Stool. So I actually Poopies. did not, but you know, you didn't when know I that about when when you Us? asked me to be on this podcast, <laughs> and I thought about what do I want to bring to the table? What do I think Is that it? my friends Hannah and Kave would would really appreciate. I thought you knew about poop. And you knew. Grew up with you understood. And I knew. Thank you. You were well, so excited ex- when I revealed it, too. <laughs> speaking oh, of excreting and getting rid of things, what did we say? Neutralize? Speaking of neutralizing. Neutral- evacuating. <laughs> evacuating. It's time for us to evacuate, neutralize, expel, defecate our tabs mm. for the week. Yeah. Okay. Oh, do you have something you wanted to say, Hannah? I say we maybe do a toilet flush. Oh. I think that's perfect. Alex, you want to count us down from three? All right. Yeah. Okay, get ready. Get ready. Three, two, one. Ooh, fl- oh, it's not going down. There's too much. <laughs> <laughs> call, wait, call, call, the call the plumber. Oh, no. Call, your yeah, call the plumber. Call How do I save my cat? Whatever his name was. Jake. Jake, Jake shows up covered like in State cat Farm. hair. He's there. Jake Sully. <laughs> Jake. <laughs> um, wow. All right. Okay. That On to listener emails. Good. Hannah, you're up first. All right. This is from Taylor. We don't know where Taylor's from. Taylor says, hi, I'm just catching up on the older episodes and listen to Kaveh talk about the Nintendo hotline. All right. It brought back my favorite story from my mom. When my parents were dinks <laughs> for dinks. D- d- dual income, Double no income, kids. Double income, no kids. All the I used cats. to make the joke that that we were sinks, we were sinking and not dinking because we had single income, no kids for a little bit. Uh, uh, that's also uh, Doug's neighbor. Remember Mr. Dink? Oh yeah, he was a dink. Oh. That was the whole thing. Is that's why he had all those different contraptions. Remember every oh, week he was wow. like, "Oh, I've got some new toys," because he was yeah. and his wife were had no kids, so they had all this money. Oh my god! Cool. When my parents were dinks fresh out of college, they lived near my cousins, who were about four and eight year old, eight years old. My parents would babysit my cousins all the time, and my mom would play Nintendo with them. It was the classic scenario where the younger one just got an unplugged controller. He clearly didn't mind, cool. because one day he was so excited and jumping around. He then gripped and hit his head on their glass table, earning him his first set of stitches. Oh my god. I'm right... <laughs> Look, Nintendo related injuries are a real nineties kid thing. Yeah, that's true. I got I got a controller thrown at me multiple times by my brother. <laughs> Hit in the head. In it's your thirties. <laughs> Yesterday. Um, I'm writing in because the older thanks, brother Stu. Thanks, Stu. Rhymes with poo. No, not so much coincidence. Bisk. <laughs> thanks, Bisk. Thanks, Bisk. Thanks. Thanks, soup. Okay. I'm writing in because the older brother would call my mom at her very official engineering job at the power oh. plant to ask her for help on Mario levels. So I may not have stories of calling into the Nintendo Power Hotline. My mom was the counselor for my cousins, which I think is pretty cool. Love the podcast. It's been an awesome bringer of joy during some rougher days. Taylor. Uh, thanks, Taylor. I appreciate you writing in. Um, that's awesome. What do you got? Uh, let's see. Email number two is from Chris. From also an undisclosed location, uh, but for reasons. Hello, Kava and Hannah. I love listening to the podcast. I love the chemistry between you two and listening to you info dump 
<laughs> you guys do an amazing job compiling and retelling your tabs to fun story compel to fun compelling stories and info. Thank you. Oh, uh, the tabs thanks. I will be talking about dot 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 have oh. the opposite effect. Oh. <laughs> For context, yeah. I work at an yeah. undisclosed airport as a ramp agent. This is why we don't know where Chris is from. Ah. Uh. Going rogue. Ramp agents are the people that load and unload the bags to the plane, and you see them with the orange sticks guiding the plane into the gate. Mm -hmm. That job's yeah. awesome. I've always wondered how you even get to that, but like shout out for anyway. getting our luggage there. Thank you. Yeah, thank you from Artist Alley. Shout out yeah. to them. Shout out to the the air traffic controllers. Oh, shout out to people who don't let us all die. Jesus yeah. Christ, Absolutely. what a thankless job of like keeping safety together forever. Can you imagine? Uh, uh, no, I don't. I, I don't even want no, to. Don't, I don't want to know what goes on. <laughs> yes, I just want to know that you. we'll stay alive. Thank you. You know what? Triple salute I to all you fine folks. At my position, I am provided a scanner and physical paper of the flight information. The paper gives me the number of bags, arrival time, gate, and other info I won't bore you with. With the fast-paced and spontaneous environment, I end up having to Google search the airline initials with the flight number, for example, Air Canada Flight 304 equals AC304, because sometimes it's more accurate than the paper. <laughs> uh -oh. So by the end of the day, I tend to collect dozens and dozens of di tabs of different <laughs> flights I have completed. If I were to not close them on a daily basis, I'm sure I'd have my own, you guessed it, 500 open tabs. That's Maybe so I should funny. start my own podcast of stories about working at an airport. <laughs> ha ha. I actually would yeah, be I dig fascinated it. Uh -huh. to know all yeah, that. I want to listen to all the tea. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Also, it's like, are, is there beef between people? Like, do the do the ramp people hate, like, the air traffic controller yeah, people? To right? the like, there's so much. I don't even know what happens. Like I'm Southwest fascinated Southwest versus to know. Delta or something. Like, what? The yeah. flight attendants just, like, flip them all off out the windows. And Gate they, agents, yeah. like, revolting. I bet you there's plenty Ooh. of drama there that you can I'm mine. Sure. I bet there's um, so much. Oh, that's what I'm saying. It's like any job. There's always drama yeah. in something. One of my favorite Reddits is that um, hobby drama where it's like they collect things that are happening in very specific hobby groups on the mm -hmm. internet and like just stuff that goes down. So like the crochet hobbyists are all hangry at each other. Anyway, what were you going to say? Oh, no, no. Like there's this one girl I watched her little um, like spilling the tea videos. I think it's like Aerith Girl or something. But anyway, she does like just these snippets of drama that like they're not in any circle that you know about and and she'll just spill yeah. it she'll give you a little summary so yeah i, I learned about nice. a lot of things that way um just to wrap up the email pretty boring compared to other listeners listener emails i'm sure which i don't agree with it's actually pretty mm -hmm. interesting listening from the tarmac chris <laughs> thanks thank chris. you chris uh if you have a tab that you would like to submit to the show Please email 500opentabs at gmail.com. That's 500. You can also try submitting a voice memo, which we would love, but keep that at, uh, to under a minute. Uh, let okay. us know uh, about a tab that you learned, something fun. Let us know where you're from and make sure to include the link. Um, otherwise, I think that about wraps us up. Right, Hannah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and just want to say thank you to Alex for coming on the show. Thank and you. Is there anything that you'd like to plug? Uh, One of your well, many appearances. Oh, my many appearances. Um, as I'm still recovering from like seven shows in nine or ten weeks. Because uh, I'm insane. You're insane. You're crazy. You do a lot of shows. You do a lot of shows. Weekend. At, oh, as we were planning this episode, I was like, mm -hmm. what week are you free? Oh and you're like, like, here's I two weeks. I can't record in three months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah. a convention machine. You're right. Well, thank you again so much for having me on. Um, but let's see. So... Uh, Labor Day weekend, I'll be at uh, SAC Anime Summer in Sacramento, California. Oh, you'll be up in SAC. I uh, know. Um, and then the next weekend, I'll be at Colossal Con East in the Poconos of Pennsylvania, where okay. I have to, where Alex has to rent a car at LaGuardia in New York oh. and drive for three hours to get to the convention. To Pennsylvania? Pennsylvania. Do they not have airports? No. <laughs> what? Well, not, the first not near the heard. Poconos. It's, uh, it's uh, I don't know, where rich people go on vacation. Um, the Poconos sounds like it's an island, like off the yeah, coast now of it's Florida just or something. Into the woods. Or into Greece. The um, but don't yeah, I have a it. lot of shows. And uh, my stuff will also be at Rose City Comic Con that same weekend. I have a friend who will be oh, up there yeah. um, right. slinging my wares. 
Oh, but nice. Double? You're double conning? I'm, I'm, I'm double, double Disney dipping. model. I did get permission. Um, then I get to go to my cousin's wedding the next weekend, who's also in nice. Pennsylvania. So it all worked out. So it, if you show up at her cousin's wedding, you'll know where to find her. Oh, yeah. There yeah. you go. Where can, uh, where can they follow you on social media? Uh, they can follow me at Alexandra Brott on Instagram. And that's uh, B-R-O-D-T, I believe, right? B-R-O-D-T, pronounced Brott. Um, and oh, then German. my website, alexandrabrat.com. You can sign up for my newsletter and uh, yeah. basically listen to me ramble about stuff. I also have Patreon. Yeah. She's got great stuff. Line. A lot of it's like... Um, like cat cactus. Uh, yeah, yes, cat, cat, cat kiss. kiss. Cat kiss is what it sounds like. A cactus cat with kills. a uh, cat face. Yes. Very cute. On a cactus. Uh, I am yeah. working on a children's book about him, by the way. Oh, Are you serious? That's yeah. awesome. It's going to be really cute. Her Fantastic. stuff is great. I use your bags that you sell for no. literally everything. Those little zip bags. So thank you. The bags of highly recommend. Thank you again, Alex. Yep. Of course, uh, we also have a Patreon. We also have a uh-huh. YouTube where you can watch this. Full video episodes are available. We have a Discord that you can sign up. We have our 500 Open Roads. And uh-huh. we have a wonderful editor, Alyssa, that I would like to thank, despite what Hannah says at the end of every episode. Thank you, Alyssa. Alyssa who? <laughs> I just like to say that in me and Alyssa's private conversations, I thank her way more than you thank her. So, oh, sure you do. Sure, we have Jan. probably free conversation. Sure, oh. Jan. Thank you. Alyssa. I want to guys... thank Alyssa yes. too. Yeah, for cutting Everybody. all my insanity earlier. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't even worry. Anyway, uh, Hannah, why don't you tell everybody where they can find us? Oh, uh, on Instagram at five hundred open tabs. The number 500, 500 open tabs. And uh, that's it. You said the other ones. Yeah. Please subscribe, rate, tell all your friends. Review. Please tell your friends. Telling your friends has been very, has been very good. That's actually help, been very helpful. Continue to do that. If you're a friend who got this pod or uh, started listening to this podcast because a friend recommended, keep it going. Recommend keep it to going. one of your friends. Yeah. We want to grow this so we can. We're trying like to grow as much as more. possible. We're trying to grow it like, like the like mold, mold on on the back of my ears. We're trying to just oh. make it just a giant sporous. I don't have oh. mold. I just I'm saying that. Oh, I, <laughs> I grossed know, you out. I'm, That's I'm, fun. I'm picturing it. Oh. Oh. Uh, speaking of mold, the one last thing. Life. <laughs> Hannah's no. got a book coming out. Oh yeah, I got a. I've got a book coming out. It's not moldy. It's called. It's called. I almost said 500 open tabs. It is called yeah. Cat 500 People. Open tabs the book. <laughs> and it comes out, when this comes out, it'll be out in about less than a, a little over a month. And if you want to catch me at a signing, I'll be at Vroman's on the 29th in Pasadena. Yay. 29th of October. of October. And then I'll be at somewhere in Portland. I'll get there. Well, uh, look on my Instagram. In New York. I helped with sure. that book. I helped with that book. Remember? Yeah, you did. I did. Oh. Uh, I did finally read ones. it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you can get that book today. <laughs> don't tell me. Don't tell me that. Oh, I'm going to tell you oh. on the air. Uh, dear listeners, it is hysterical and it's profound and it's beautiful. Highly recommend Are it. Are you it's serious? A fantastic do you read. mean all that? Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, I do. It's great. I loved it. Stop. I want to read it. It goes Thanks. in a different direction than I thought it would. It's wonderful. Yep. I'm very proud of you. You did a fantastic job. Stop. So everybody Stop. go check oh, it out. You. Cat people, do the pre-orders. You can also get uh, the tote bag. A tote right? bag. I don't know. Can yeah. I'm I done get with this. The tote bag. <laughs> Most importantly, I now what I'm thanked in it. I accept no, my the best trip book ever. to Pasadena, oh, which is you should do that. October for Lightbox Expo, October 24th. Yeah. Oh, you're gonna be at Lightbox. That's why they scheduled me at, at that time because Lightbox is gonna be. And then I'm gonna then come anyway. visit you and be yeah. better yeah. with you. Yeah. I'll I'll, I'll end you if you don't. Okay. It's a deal. Anyway. That's all, folks. Alex, thanks again. Uh, and until Alex. then, Segundus Nixon shot five times on this wall. That's my new is that, exit. Is that our, is that our new sign-off? <laughs> Secundus, Secundus Nixon shot five times on this wall. Wow. Alex has no idea Al- what we're talking Alex about, but it's like, great. What? <laughs> Nixon's matter. ancestor did it in Pompeii. It doesn't matter. <laughs> None of it's real. Look, but we're just, that's just nonsense. Keep it juicy. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. Thanks, Alex. Bye. Bye.